Hey guys, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program! My name is Twitchy and last time we took to the skies for a variety of science, exploration and scansat contracts, grabbing ourselves the altimetry data for Kerbin and enough science to grant us access to the solar panels and setting our sights on the fuel systems. These two pieces of cornerstone tech break our reliance on taking batteries with us for all our power needs and also allow us to do some fuel transfer tricks to grant ourselves some extra Delta V from the boosters. With these technologies, we can cast our eyes further afield to Kerbin's largest natural satellite, the Mun. The Kerbal base game has a variety of contracts that we need to complete, and also I would like to get the altimetry data from Scansat to be able to plan my first landing. Once again, my name is Twitchy, and welcome to my final career. The first item on our mission tick list is of course to find out how we're going to be funding this. Over in Gene Kerman's mission control, he has a contract waiting for us. Start exploring the moon. We need to fly by the moon and we need to get some science back from the moon. We, we can do this. This is easy. I mean, I say easy, but of course, we're, I'm used to doing this with mission planning and all the maneuver nodes and stuff. And we haven't upgraded far enough in the game to be able to do that. But I remember some tricks from the very beginning of the Kerbal community when we were all trying to figure out how to do this originally. So I think I'm going to lean quite heavily on those. Anyway, in the background, we have been building a craft for a little bit now. This craft, I hope, is going to take two Kerbals up to the moon, fly through the sphere of influence, grab itself a whole bunch of science and get out there. As you can see, I've got the science on the bottom, on the boost stage, if you will. This is so that we can carry uh, less weight. I, I want to try and maximize our Delta V here. As the 30 part limit and the level of technology that we have make it rather difficult to make a Mun capable rocket. Indeed, so uncapable are we that I decided to take away the second cockpit. We were struggling to reach the Delta V necessary for this craft. That That's fine. Uh, it, it's not the ideal scenario. I really would have preferred to take two Kerbals with me, a pilot and a scientist, level them up, bring them back ready for an actual man mission, but that's fine. We will just take a pilot with us. Uh, need the pilot for the pointing operation. If I was going to put a probe core on here, I might as well have just put a second cockpit on there. Uh, I suppose it weighs a little bit less. Going through various iterations of the boost stage underneath there, just to make sure that we are indeed uh, maximizing our Delta V. Turns out I didn't really need to go that in depth, but it, it really did make me feel a lot better. Of course, making sure our Kerbals are wearing the correct uh, time. Valentina definitely needs that there. And as we've reached the maximum number of allowed parts on the craft and we've got nothing inside the payload bay, I'm going to take that off there and slap down a thermometer on the top of the craft so we can get at least a little bit of science. Today's mission is launching from the KSC at the equator, making sure we take full advantage of the rotation of Kerbin. The launch could have been a little bit more stable. Of course, the long, thin and narrow shape of our rocket making it a little bit wobbly on the way up. And because of this, we followed a bit of a steeper trajectory than we normally would do. Normally, I like to make sure that I am 45 degrees by about 10 kilometers. This gives us a rather efficient ascent profile. But because of the wobbly nature of this flight, I've decided to go a bit steeper up, meaning that we turned sideways much later on, meaning we needed to do a lot more burning sideways up and out of the atmosphere. This led to all sorts of inefficiencies, but because I had well accounted for the mission Delta V, we actually had a plenty to spare here. Throwing away our boost stage reveals a double kick stage, one to get us into orbit and the second to take us to the moon. Turns out I slightly miscalculated my Delta Vs there and the one that was supposed to take us to the moon actually ended up finishing the circularization. So with the overestimate on the boost stage, with the underestimate on the kick stage. I think everything's worked out well here and we've ended up breaking about even. Of course, having a look at the layout of the moon, Kerbin, and uh, where my craft is, we were on the wrong side. We, we literally, like, just missed our opportunity to go to the moon. Uh, so we're going to go around the planet, of course, observing a small eclipse there. It's beautiful. We actually went so far out and then back in our orbit that we got to watch two eclipses. If you are trying to go to the moon without any mission planning, here is a tip for you. Go around the planet until you see the moon just peak above the rim of the planet. Now, obviously, where it's so close to the uh, the sun over here, I had a little bit of trouble spotting the moon. But when it comes up above the horizon, just just burn, just burn. Swap over to map view at that point, and you are trying to get bring the uh, the apple apps of your orbit, the highest part of your orbit, just underneath the orbit of the moon. You want to leave something like three or four moon widths, just to make sure you uh, you catch the the moon's sphere of influence, but you don't go slamming into it. The hardest part about transferring from 
Kerb and to any other body is remembering the correct angle to leave from so that you and the planetary body arrive at the same point in space at the same time. Thankfully, there are a whole bunch of mods, websites, or tools to actually find out the exact angles you need, though most of the destinations have little handy tricks to remember, much like Juno's only 45 degrees away, or as I was saying about the moon being just above the horizon. Those two would be the only two I ever actually just use without checking some sort of external tool or mod. Big things happen in the video behind us. After collecting some high curb in science, we got our way into the moon's sphere of influence, and uh, we are actually on a collision course. I didn't leave enough room, it turns out. That's no big problem, though. We just burn radially out and get our periaps just above the surface of the moon there. Periman might be called... Cool. Might be called Perry Munn at this point. Of course, we're not just here to make sure we fulfill some contracts, though those contracts have been fulfilled. We managed to grab all the science we needed as well when we first entered the sphere of influence. Now that we've set our flight trajectory to not crash into the Munn and to just exit us out at roughly the same angle, I also took the opportunity during our burn to make sure our plane of orbit was kept equatorial. Uh, we were appearing to have a bit of an encounter with the moon that went around one of the poles, which unfortunately ended up kicking us off into a weird inclination, but if I made, made sure it was kept all equatorial, we ended up exiting in this rather nice orbit around Kerbin here. It was a very small expenditure of Delta V to bring my flight path down into the atmosphere. Obviously, at this point, without the ability to see what my periaps height is, we're just going to have to trust that I've gone down far enough to catch the atmosphere, but not so far down that we're going to burn up. But this, this kind of works out quite well for us. Whilst we're burning through the higher levels of the atmosphere, I try and burn as much much fuel off as possible. The plasma getting are quite intense, but as we're coming down to less than two kilometers a second, I feel like the craft is going to survive. My main point now, the main thing I want to try and do now is land on the ground. Uh, it's, uh, we've landed in the water so many times now, it would just be really good if we could actually get some sort of ground landing and uh, enable ourselves to get some uh, some science there. But, but no, we overshoot. We are very much headed towards the water. Once again, watching a beautiful sunset in the background the moon over there on the horizon that's where we just fell from took us maybe half a day to fall all that distance and we landed got ourselves a whole a bunch of science like so much science we got ourselves like 100 and something uh, science points there. That's that's enough to get us everything we needed. Next up, we've got a contract that our robotics team are going to use as a pathfinding mission. The ScanSat mission to go take all the multispectral data around Kerbin seems like a perfect place to cut our teeth on sending up our first satellite. Obviously, eventually we are going to want to put one of these around every planet and get a full data suite for everything, but right now, we're just going to build this little thing. We started off with the satellite probe core on the top through some, sat some solar panels around it some antenna and then the payloads and these was making sure that we had everything we needed to complete the mission. Then we just needed to build a little rocket underneath it to make sure we could get it up into orbit and for some reason I decided that I wanted to put a solid booster in the middle stage there. I'm not sure why this uh, crazy idea occurred to me but I, I ran with it we're going with it. Let's just call it an Antares homage. Let, let's go with it. After briefly flying with the idea of a 1.8 meter fuel tank on the bottom of this craft I go back to the standard 1.2 meter with the swivel engine underneath. I'm trying to think about the type of booster that I want to have on the outside. Briefly think about putting some liquid fuel ones out there, but as I'm very, very close to getting the part count, I instead go down for the solid ones, just as I say, saving parts. We're going for a polar orbit, so once again, Woomerang launch site is the launch site of choice. It is further away from the equator, thus we have less rotational speed sideways. Uh, we are going up. This, I have to remind everybody, is a simulation mission. We've put together a very quick prototype here, and I want to see how this reacts in space. It seems to be going quite well. We managed to uh, deploy our antenna before we lost contact with the launch site. That is something that happens relatively often to me with my, uh, with my satellites, but after five at those solid boosters in the middle, I have discovered that actually that gets us a really eccentric orbit. And I think long and hard about whether that is actually the thing that I want. Thinking back to how uh, we had overlapping audit orbits for our last ScanSat mission, maybe having a, a elliptical one is much better. So trying to put down some better solar panels so we can keep the power going here. And back to Woomerang for our proper launch. Again, going a polar so that we can get a full scan of Kerbin 
underneath us. As we go around and around the planet, the Kerbin will spin underneath us, giving us a fresh view every time we have a new orbit, which will be pretty tasty for the mission that is ahead of us. Uh, I wait until we are about 50, maybe 60 kilometers up in the atmosphere before deploying my uh, communications antennas. I would have done it a little bit lower, but I'm always terrified of them being ripped off due to the aerodynamic forces. A circularization burn goes way over shot, but that's fine. We're here to scan the planet, not provide a consistent like round trip time. So uh, I, I think this will be fun. We're scanning pretty well. I do decide that maybe it is a little bit eccentric and bring my orbit down towards a little bit more of a circular shape. Uh, and, and then we just got to leave this because the scanning the scanning needs to scan. If that last mission was the Pathfinder, this is the main event. The Hennick is now going to be changed into the Munich. And the first thing we're going to do, as it does not need to return to the planet from, from the Mun, we're going to just rip off that parachute from the top. We don't need it at all. And we're going to stick one of the extra ScanSat modules on there. I'm going to try and take all the ScanSat modules with me. We already have the multispectral scanner and the low resolution altimetry scanner. I think the one that I just put on here, this other radar, also does low resolution altimetry data. I don't know. We'll figure it out at some point but I thought hey we're going we're going all out let's send it all to the moon at once because of the extra mass, I have swapped out all the small 1.2 meter fuel tanks for the longer variants. We've gone as big as we can. I'm going to do the same up the top here. First, taking a little bit of time to appreciate the animation on that ScanSat radar. That that that's amazing. But I'm having a look at the fuel tanks here, and we, we need we need more fuel. Just that that is that is the only way we can describe it. I'm not going to go as far as to putting one of the full lengths up here. Uh, that that's mainly for stability reasons. If we went and got, went and put something uh, half as long as the booster of the rocket on top of the on top of the actual rocket the aerodynamic forces on the nose will completely twist it out of shape it would make you uh, spin around at about the speed of sound and that's that's really not the fun way to do it the ksc is the launch site a polar orbit of the moon is our destination off we go the munich is a go this is a very much derived craft from the last hennick satellite that we uh, put into a polar orbit of the Kerbin just a moment ago oh look this over there that's a nice this guy is just gonna head his way up and to a nice circular orbit we are headed to the moon it's good to see the moon behind us it was even better to see minmus there as well the first boost stage drops off pretty nicely and we seem to be powering our way up through about 20 kilometers at the moment traveling at approaching a kilometer a second let's say 800 meters per second but whilst we're performing the same set of orbital maneuvers that valentina did to get to the moon i would like to take the opportunity here to thank every single one of my patrons these are the guys that keep me motivated and keep me focused on what we're doing here and now next time that my friends come to me and be like hey twitchy do you want to jump the border and go and free a bunch of medical lemurs from an evil corporation's lab i'm gonna be like no my friends i'm afraid i can't my priorities lay elsewhere these people these people are donating to me to make sure i can keep these videos coming and thus i must keep the videos coming so a great big thank you to those guys and if you would like to get involved and help out keeping the pressure applied to me to make these videos, check out the link below. Falling into the moon's sphere of influence, you can see that we are set up on an impact course here. This is fine. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is set up a uh, flight profile that leads us to only just impact the moon. That's right. I'm going to keep an impact course going uh, because I want to make sure that I do not have a very messy Kerbin system. And uh, to do that, we've got to get rid of all our boost stages. So this one is going to crash into the moon, and we're going to use the little bit of fuel that we've got on board of the actual satellite here to lift our orbit into a more circular one. So having a quick look, I just burn radial out to make sure that our orbit is raised way above the surface of the moon there, making sure we are at least 10 kilometers up. I don't know exactly how far 10 kilometers up, but if we are at least 10 kilometers up, we know that we can, will avoid hitting the mountains because the tallest mountain on the moon it's about 10 kilometers, if you didn't know that. Falling my way down to Periaps, I see that I'm about 70 kilometers up. This is actually ideal. Uh, it's about where I want to be for all the scan set equipment. It ideally likes to be at about 70 kilometers. We are falling a little bit lower than that, but that, that's okay. We can deal with that in our circularization burn. I'm watching my vertical speed indicator at the top there. It's 
got, gone from telling me that I'm going downwards to going upwards. That means we must have passed our periaps. And I've noticed that I've actually gone and got ourselves into an equatorial orbit. You might remember that this was not what I was trying to do. Uh, I remind you again that I actually stream these and I was kind of working on a little bit on autopilot as I was talking to chat and having a, a good time. This was the second time we'd sent something to the moon, so I was just coasting my way through it and uh, ended up equatorial by accident. I was like, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to try and change our inclination. And the best way to do that is do it in a very high orbit. Unfortunately, I set my orbit up to far, far, far too high, and we've actually ended up leaving the Mun. This was not the thing, not the intention at all. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is just circularize our orbit here, and we're going to start and think about how we can get back into the Mun's sphere of influence. Now, at the moment, because the Mun has a smaller orbit than we have, it is currently racing away from us. Smaller orbits are faster than bigger orbits, or higher orbits, I suppose, is the better way to word it. So using that little bit of information that we have just gleaned there and in fact it was a bit of information that I knew beforehand what we're going to do is bring the other side of our orbit down nice and low I'm aiming to have my periapsis about the same amount lower than the moon's orbit then my apoaps is above the moon's orbit this should then uh, cancel out the moon moving away from me and then me also catching up and hopefully leading, leading us to meet up again in the next orbit at this point, I am ecstatic. I'm fist pumping, I'm whooping, I'm trying to get my girlfriend to give me high fives, but she doesn't know what's going on and it's too, too long-winded to explain, so it didn't really go too well. Anyway, you remember that we had a, a thing that we were trying to do before we actually got thrown out of the moon sphere of influence and had to waste half a month? That's right, we are doing the inclination change right now. As you can see, we're trying to put our flight path over the top of the moon's pole so that we can actually stick to the Terminator. That is the point that I'm aiming for, that thin line in between daylight and nighttime. This is because when we are in orbit over the top of that line, we're actually always experiencing sunlight. This sunlight is what we're going to use to power our craft, and we're going to have to try and keep our solar panel constantly aligned towards the sun. As we are so early in the game, we didn't have the technology or the part count to be able to just cover this thing in solar panels. Maybe one day in the future, we will be able to upgrade this type of craft to an absolute beast. Uh, here we go with a little bit of a solar panel reorientation. Taking the moment to really soak in the atmosphere here before we drop our way down towards a periapsis. I never know how to take these shots when we're looking at the sun. Like, do I want my, my craft to be completely inside the sun? Do I just want it to illuminate? Look, give, give us some opinions down below, guys. I, I've, I've done it many, many times, and I don't know which one is the better one. Oh, well. Circularization burn is away. It, it really doesn't take long. Uh, I, I kind of just guessed at this one, and I I've got to say, I did pretty well at getting circularized there. I did all of it with the, uh, with the HUD taken away and just went, burn. Stop. Uh, and that, it turns out, was enough to get our orbit almost perfectly circular. But we are a satellite on a mission, and that mission is to scan the entirety of the Mun's surface. And to do that, we also were going to fund it via the wonders of a contract. Oh, I didn't pick up the contract, did I? I don't know about you guys, but I do this quite often. I always send out the mission knowing that I'm going to pick up a contract and then forget to actually pick up the contract until I'm out there. Thankfully, the majority of the time, it isn't a contract that requires a brand new vessel. So this time, we just go back to the Space Center and get Gene Kerman to take that one on for us. So, in orbit around the moon, we're going to start our altimetry scan for the ScanSat. I'm just going to watch our power levels here. I'm particularly interested in making sure that we are not losing power over time. Paradoxically, that equals having a minus number in your resource uh, readout in the top right. Thankfully, a minus number has been achieved. I'm just going around looking at all the individual solar panels, seeing what efficiencies we are making there. I've got to be honest with you, if I was going to recommend a layout for your solar powered satellite early game this this is not the one uh, put them all in a line so you can put them directly at the sun together anyway we are now currently scanning the surface of the moon it's going to take a little bit of time to get all the data that we are after which means that Munich here is our first long time Mun resident meaning the Mun has a population of one robot anyway as I was saying it's going to take us some time to do the scans and to pass that time I 
Okay, we'll go ahead and go and grab ourselves a whole bunch of other contracts and uh, take on a little missions to do in the meantime. But that is going to be all that I have got time for today. If you enjoyed everything that has gone on today, please do feel free to drop me a like. Anything that happens that builds engagement really does help on the YouTube algorithm. I'm going to spend the next couple of hours just sat here scanning the moon, and I will see you next time or when we're going to do all the things that fill that in. Bye!